Greetings and welcome to Matrix Revealed presentation 33. Something that uh, has sort of come to mind um, recently, I think you all know what these are, but uh, I wonder how many of you have uh, considered that not only are they known as compasses, and I don't think uh, any, I need to even talk about what they, what they can be used to symbolise, but they're also known as dividers, which I think is very interesting. And um, the subject I actually want to talk about on this video is um, the subject of fear. But um, before I do, I, I want to give a shout out to Lee of Flat Earth British Sub, um, a fantastic presentation. I, I subscribe to three of the same channels he does, namely uh, Rudy Marley Asket, Niven and Wise Up channel that have all looked at Machu Picchu um, from different aspects, asking questions about it. Now Lee's come along and he's looked at the bigger picture of the entire continent of South America. And I couldn't help but think of the analogy of when you sweep a kitchen floor, how you pile all the grit and dirt and fluff into sort of like little mountain ridges. And in some ways, when you look at the green flatter lands of most of South America, it almost looks like everything has been bulldozed and piled up. But as Lee has shown, it also looks very much like not so much waves well, it does look like waves as they come in on the shore, but think of it in terms of sound waves, sound vibration. Maybe that is all that debris that is now petrified is such a mixture of different things all mashed up together. And yes, very different from the green land. So I don't think it's another perspective. And it is also a wonderful example of how we can look at things from different aspects and whilst we may not agree on every little detail, the overall picture and this continuum of asking questions, that is really what this whole truth seeking is all about. It's not about who is right and who is wrong. Um, and it may be through this continuous asking questions amongst those three, four channels that we do find the ultimate truth about all of it from that. Um, I think this is a wonderful aspect of this whole truth seeking and spiritual path that we're on, whatever level you're at. And as usual, the nose starts to run. <laughs> but um, it's a it's a standing back from the actual subject about the land mass the continent and then the details of what the things may or may not have been. Um, it's a wonderful example of how we can at least have be in agreement that things are not right and then offer possible answers. It doesn't matter if they're right or wrong. That's not what this is about. It's about asking the questions. Now, it, it's such a wide and fascinating umbrella topic anyway. Whether you're looking at the truth-seeking aspect from a histo an historical perspective, asking the questions about what is right or what is wrong in what we are told is history, or whether you are going within and trying to find the answers about what you are. Um, these things all tie in anyway. Um, as within, so without, very much so. Now, one of the biggest ones people have um, is one of fear. Now, to someone from the outside, these fears can seem very irrational. Um, I can only speak from a pers personal experience. So let's take anxiety and, and um, panic attacks as a perfect example of going out that front door where you're going to have to interact with, with other people and mentally that builds up this brick wall that you just can't get over. 
and although it although it seems irrational it's like look all you've got to do is open that door and walk out that door when it's full blown if you try and do it i challenge anybody it is one of the hardest things to do now i i have um encouraged three channels or in some ways helped create three channels from this is from the comments i've had back and private messages and discussions and things as well um so i know this is right it's not um well done me here um because this is something you can all take part in there's a there's a fear now a lot of people will say oh no i couldn't do a youtube channel but just go into any shopping area you're going to see a lot more people with one of these things in the hand doing this so what's the difference between sending a text message making a, a video or phone call to somebody and actually talking and talking to one of these things when you're doing it to a specific person as a reply to a message or whatever now there's some there's some channels out there and in some ways this one is as much in that way it's like an online diary um, of my spiritual path it's sharing my experiences um, because that's what I can talk about best about how I've gone through things and that's all I can give you I can give you ideas of what other things but I'm not I'm not gonna have I certainly can't be an authority of it if I haven't gone through the experience. Similarly, I won't recommend any channels unless I have watched some of the videos uh, myself. I will. I will. I may not agree early on in a video. I might think, "Oh, this doesn't seem right," but I'll, I'll watch it all the way through. Give it a fair chance because I may miss out on something. Who am I doing the disservice to then? First and foremost. So anyway, back to these these things, these cell phones, these mobile phones. I want you to make a video. Put the camera on selfie, press record, start talking to the, into the thing. Now, do you think you can do that? Now, I'm not saying make yourself a YouTube channel, although I would I would welcome everybody and encourage everybody to actually do this. Because one, it comes o overcomes the fear of talking into one of these devices. But you're going to get two things happen here. When you look in the mirror, what you see is a flipped over version of yourself. Most people, their faces are not entirely symmetrical. What you're used to seeing in the mirror is going to look slightly different when you see yourself in a photograph. Now what you say on and record on this device is entirely up to you. If you think about it this way, I am my own director, I am my, my own producer, I am my own script writer, whether I actually write a script, write bullet points or whether I keep it all up here. So I'm my, my own script writer, my own creator. I've chosen the back scene that I want behind me. I can change that if I want. I become my own and I've also, of course, got the starring role on this channel, <laughs> the only role on this channel most of the time. But um, you see the difference here. It's all come from within myself. And these are some of the best channels. They're not necessarily big channels. They are people who are, as Roots Channel, Maz has said, it's like an online diary, an online confessional. The Black Sheep Researcher channel has said the same. So you can look back at your own spiritual development as much as anything else, and you're also sharing it with other people. And it is worth listening to all these small channels. Stellavision is another one, Holographic Multiverse and The Way of One. I'm, I'm, I'm talking purely on the spiritual side of things here. Um, there are others. I'm, I'm doing this off the top of my head. Um, these are channels I watch regular and um, look, always look forward to their new presentations because they are messages that are personal, they are being spoken from the heart. 
you, you, you'll know if it resonates with you, but you'll also, I think, feel what is right and what is wrong. And as like Maz has said, like with this whole Max Egan thing, well, just take what resonates and discard the rest. Um, don't chuck the baby out with the ward, bath water and think, oh, that channel is completely false. Because remember, the deception works best when it is a mixture of truth and lies together because the truth part will lure people in and it only may be just 10 percent of it that is actually a lie anyway but this to do this is empowering because you will get an idea how you come across to other people you can you have to be on the other hand if you're going to publish this and make it public you don't want to become so critical that you think oh I forgot to say this my hair doesn't look quite right I'm not happy with well, in my case you might say oh my beard's not quite right well it comes to a point where you say tail with it because you can forever keep trying to make that perfect recording but does it matter to everybody else the important part is what you're trying to say to other people and what is coming from here so I am asking and I'm encouraging as many of you as, po as possible, even if you're going to make the video just purely for yourself and you don't publish it, to just get on there and do it. You can focus on that lens and you can make that lens bigger and turn it into a wall. But you're creating that fear yourself. Because this is an exercise to actually empower and help you out of, out of this and overcome that fear of talking to other people because you, you are talking to other people but initially you're talking to an electronic device. It's also been said that the whole truth seeking thing is a trap and in some ways yes Everything you commit to this electronic device, these electronic devices and then upload to an internet is feeding an artificial intelligence. But I would prefer to go with the idea of I am sharing that information with other people who choose to listen. Because this is the thing, I'm not taking away people's choices. What I've asked people to do is not scaling the side of Everest um, where they could potentially hurt or themselves um, severely or for whatever reason they they physically can't do it in the first place um, and giving them that whole negative oh I can't do it because and whatever reason it may be you're missing an arm and it it's just too difficult so all I'm asking you to do is just get your phone out which most of you have got and just record yourself and learn from yourself because this journey is all about going within anyway it's it's an enormous barrier that you will then overcome it's it's something i had to face there's um when you're going down particularly the truth seeking side now let's take this take the subject of mud floods tataria flat earth for example there comes a point um and I'm speaking from personal experience, where you feel like you're just dropped in the ocean. You can imagine like you're now got the life jacket on, there's the Titanic, the lights have now gone out, all you're left with is the cold water. Ignore the point about um, your, your organs are going to fail because the water's so cold, because this is virtual, we're not actually physically there, are we? Um, I'm just painting a picture. So now all you're left with is this black expanse of water. You can't see land in any distance. The only lights you've now got is, is moonlight and any stars to go by. And when if you're on this path and you come to this sort of realisation, now it doesn't matter what the absolute truth is with this. It All that matters is the point you've got to at this point at this point in time because I'm not saying stop asking questions either just keep con continuously question questioning but when you've got to a point where things resonate and you feel at this present time this now that this feels right for you but it opens up 
that drop into that ocean <laughs> where you think, shit, I don't know where I am. I don't know my origins. I don't know where I'm going. And I've got no idea where I am either now. That can be a very daunting and unsettling and very unnerving feeling and it is a it's an awful realization but with this path it's not all going in one direction it is about looking both side sides as i've said before think of the twin caduceus the the two serpents when they meet eye to eye seeing things eye to eye and you are that balance. You you know what's good, what's bad. You know an an action you might do, which will benefit you that, that will hurt somebody else. So you choose not to do it. Um, another very important, another very big question. Lee, flat Earth British sub asked, um, th if we're not doing, are we still doing evil without even realizing it? Well, I gave an analogy of that. Well, yes, if you're in the debt slave system, for example, you can be the kindest person in the world. But the fact that you're having stoppages out of your wages and you're paying taxes, and of course all the tax that's added on to food and things we buy, some of that money, directly or indirectly, is, is funding wars and injury and harm and death to other people. Uh, some are false flags, some will have uh, reality to it to enforce the script that's being run and played out on all of us anyway. So yes, you can unknowingly quite easily still be doing e evil. This is where our imagination and creativity has to come in to find innumerable ways out of this because you've all got very different personal circumstances. So there is no one answer to this. I, c I can't say, oh, you've all got to go and do this or do that because it's not gonna work for everybody. And um, I'm not gonna say you've got to do anything. It, you, you always have that choice anyway. Um, all I'm doing is planting seeds and offering ideas that I hope, uh, as, as happened to me, it might just be one word, something that will spark somebody in somebody something in somebody else that couples in with a spiritual download they've had uh, and this is another thing that happens you'll get uh, synchronized what they call synchronized thoughts you'll think of something you may even make a video and you'll find somebody else has concurrently come to the same conclusion and made a video which is almost shall we say word for word uh, but you've not copied each other either um this is never about glorifying oneself and making a name for yourself i never envisaged I, and i certainly never had, and i think i speak for most other channels nobody went out with the intentions of doing this to become famous or to and certainly not to make lots of money because from the the channels that are monetized um i don't think they get a lot of money and i'm sure youtube will twist it so they don't quite meet certain targets to get so much income. There is also another aspect to this. If I want to make a video and talk about, um, some, say, disproving Darwin's theory, theory of evolution and saying, well, here's the facts, it's definitely wrong, I'd be mortified to find that the preceding advert before the video plays is something that is promoting that side, something saying maybe on the History Channel. Um, and then there's also the problem, if you mention certain subjects, you get that horrible uh, Wikipedia entry under the video now. So anybody new coming into this, that's deliberately misleading, t telling them it's only a theory because it's following an official narrative. And um, so there's another step to sort of overcome. Y your video has got to sort of draw them away from the, the, this paragraph of lies that's put underneath as well. Um, there's lots of those and certainly some of the channels that are speaking the truth, that's almost like an accolade, a compliment to get one of those because you're, you're being seen as a threat to the narrative. Um, so that's, that's quite good in a way. So 
there's always a positive and a negative way of looking at everything so I I choose to find the positive in it, it it's like um, I'm glad that I don't have the technical skills to put for to make a video with lots of visuals and things because I could have easily got carried away and probably found I've fallen foul of the copyright laws um, I mean at the end of the day YouTube can sort of basically are saying we, we make the rules and we're change them to suit us as and when we want and there's nothing you can do about it you can complain to them but it's not you're not going to get anywhere um, it, especially now it's become more mainstream in its nature as well but it's still a tool we can use but uh, as I said um, on I think the last couple of videos I'm gonna try and find solutions and I'm going to offer from my personal journey ways around this um, certainly the best thing we can all do as much as possible is just ask that question of do you really need a new mobile phone for example or can you make do with the one you've got I mean this one when I'm doing these recordings people have said to me it's only coming out through the left speaker um, I fried this phone electrics a few years back I dropped it the screen cracked it carried on working perfectly for a while then all of a sudden it it said enough's enough I sent it off to be repaired and it's never been right since it's come back I can't for example do speech to text any longer but I'm not really worried about that as and when I will have to replace this but I'm trying to not put money into the system because the money is the mechanism it's not the root it's the mechanism of the evil in so many ways so the more we can pull away from that but we can also still use it I mean mobile phones the intent behind them may well have been just to spy on us and keep tabs on us and identify key people that the system do not want or see as the biggest threat but look what you can do with it, as I've suggested. Use it to overcome a fear, and you've now turned it round. There's also the aspect of the AI itself. Now, if you have an artificial intelligence, it is not going to have a soul. It is not going to think in a spiritual way. It's going to think in a purely logical way. So something that benefits many rather than a few which will always be the logical outcome so although the artificial intelligence may have been created from a position of evil the logic will have created a monster that will turn on its creator and well, this is how I, I see it in this reality, that the AI can actually be an advantage because, remember, it's all about frequency and sound. Sound creates a vibration. From a vibration, you get friction. From friction, you get heat, and then you get light. You can see the way the, uh, the medium changes through that. So by speaking truth and speaking alternative truth to the official narrative, we are collectively changing a frequency. We are creating. The AI is logging and it is learning from everything we say. So, and as I said before, we are all teachers, ob observers and students. And I've said before, consider what we are teaching. Well, what if we are teaching the creator, which is an inner child, that is learning from the experiences that the spirits in physical vessels are here for but we're also teaching the artificial intelligence as well because that is collecting and data collecting information and it is learning from the words we speak so we could actually change the frequency of everything we can change the paradigm just with that and I think that is something worth pursuing and I do welcome 
your comments and thoughts on that and I do want to say a very big big thank you for all the comments that have been received so far and the promotions from, from other channels anyway I think uh, what we talked for 25 minutes before this memory card glitches again because I've just lost the previous version I started the record of this um, so I shall stop here and I will say ta-ta for now and just keep speaking your truth stay in your power and don't give in to the fear because it's all based on illusion darkness has no real power except illusion and how it can manipulate and coerce us to do its dirty work that's the thing to always remember with this we are co-creators um, if you have a YouTube channel you are a creator and uh, again big shout out to the Black Sheep Researcher channel your videos are not just videos they are works of art um, they are creations in their own right art for the technological age there are other channels as well um, fantastically and beautifully put together and also giving you a wealth of information new ideas fresh thoughts um, confirming your own thoughts as well probably so keep up the good work so ta-ta for now i hope this will inspire some of you and do let me know in the comments thank you